Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of Nightmares Run Deep, featuring the ships Tsukiyama Kakahina and Sakuetsu Arankita. Actually, there was supposed to be another video that was uploaded today, but more about that at the end card, and now I hope you enjoy. His heart was beating wildly in his chest. His breathing came in short, rigid breaths of air, and his muscles tensed. His chest clenched painfully as he gasped desperately, trying to move past the darkness. He felt so lost. He couldn't breathe. He... His hand reached out, but instead of warmth, it fell into empty space. There was no warmth, no comfort. Suddenly, his weight tipped over and he fell, the sharp pain of colliding with the hardwood floor finally shaking him awake. A pained hiss escaped his throat as he felt his side throbbing in response. He blinked confused, his eyes stung with unshed tears, either from the dull pain spreading through his veins or the quickly fading images he didn't know. But the moment the shock ebbed and left room to think about the nightmare, the heat in his cheeks intensified and small rivers decorated his face. He cursed. Hot anger boiled within his blood in the futile attempt to drown out the desperation suddenly overtaking his thinking. He kicked the couch in frustration, immediately regretting it as a new wave of pain spread from his ankle. With difficulty, he suppressed the pained cry, stifling it before it alarm. Alarm who? The darkness in the room made him painfully aware that he was alone. But even without it, who'd want to be with him? Impulsive and rash, always quick to anger. Nothing but an arrogant king. The comfort he'd longed for was far out of his reach. There was no warmth, no comfort. He sat down on the ground beside the couch, wrapping his arms tightly around himself, trying to subdue the pain within and suffocate the cries before they could escape. It's been years. He shouldn't be. Kex? He stopped. The familiar voice rang through the silence and echoed in the room he previously deemed empty. He heard a yawn from where he estimated the blocker and froze. He didn't know what to do. He didn't want to be seen like this, but... Tobio, are you awake? His tone was heavy with sleep, and he slowly made his way over to the small lamp in the corner of the room. I swear to the gods, if you... Sobio? The light pierced the darkness and softly illuminated the room, including him. Tsukishima could see his poor attempt at holding himself together, hiding behind the too small coffee table. He walked up to him, his eyes slightly widened at the side. His whole demeanor changed. The tiredness slowly faded and the anger that wasn't even real to begin with melted into something much softer. What happened? He gently sat down next to him, leaning his back against the coffee table while Kageyama leaned against the couch, still curled up, with his knees to his chest and face hidden against them. The setter shook his head. He didn't want to talk about it. Okay, what do you need? He waited several minutes before trying again. Can you talk to me right now? Again, he shook his head. His throat had tightened and he doubted his voice would carry much weight. Then I'll talk. Do you want space? He gulped, fighting the instinct to hide away from them. This wouldn't solve anything and if he was honest, behind his fear, looking past the possibility that they would reject him, he really wanted them close right now. Scarcely, he managed to shake his head again as his grip tightened. 
So Kishima frowned. Can I touch you? He reached out a hand and placed it on his, the set his nails digging into the skin of his arm. Is this okay? He nodded slowly and before he knew it, the blunt had intertwined their fingers, pulling them away before they caused damage. He just held them, occasionally massaging little patterns with his fingers into his skin. Sorry that I didn't wake you before. You seem pretty exhausted today. You were out like a light as soon as you hit the cushions. And he chuckled slightly. It was a warm sound that seemed to alleviate parts of the darkness invading his mind. Still, it's probably not good for your back to sleep on the couch. As athletes, we need to care about such things, don't we? He smiled at him. Kagama hadn't even noticed it, but while he spoke, he had lifted his head to observe the blonde as usual. Now, his ocean blue eyes met the golden brown of Tsukishima's, filled with soft reassurance and concern, although he tried to hide it. He reached the hand out that wasn't intertwined with his and gently traced the tear stains on his cheeks before wiping them away. Should we go upstairs to the others? Kageyama nodded silently. It was as if for the blink of an eye he had forgotten that he wasn't alone. A second had been enough to send him spiraling, but here he was, holding onto Tsukishima's hand like a lifeline. It was warm. He wasn't alone. He was loved. In their bedroom, they were greeted by a tired-looking Sadashi who looked up at them disoriented, and Shoyo, who was still out cold, sleeping like a stone and taking up most of the bed. Is everything all right? He sounded more asleep than awake and barely managed to train his eyes on the pair. On a normal day, he would have found it adorable and teased him for it, at least tried to, but today he simply climbed into bed beside him and pulled the smaller into his arms, hiding his face against his neck. Yamaguchi radiated warmth. A little too much on most summer nights, but perfect right now, as it reminded him that he wasn't alone, accompanied by Tsukishima taking his place beside him and pulling him closer as well. He kissed him softly on his hair while Tadashi brought his hand to his lips. I love you, Tobio. Tsukishima hummed in agreement. I love you too. Engulfed by warmth and comfort, he felt himself drift back into sleep, not alone, never alone as long as they were with him. Deep breath, breathe in, and out. He tried his best to calm down in the darkness of the room mimicking Atsumu's breathing, who was closest to him. The blonde slept peacefully, unbothered and drooling over his pillow, but Kida considered it nothing short of calming. It was... familiar. Under better circumstances, he would have considered it adorable. Now, he clung to the faint sense of comfort his boyfriend brought simply by being close. Behind his eyelids, whenever he blinked, flashes of the hard images still lingered within his mind. He gulped. It was silly, really. He shouldn't be so scared of something so minuscule, but he couldn't help it. Ever since he was a child, the shadows scared him. The darkness the night brought was full of demons, his grandma had said. Of course, he knew now that those were just myths, but it stuck with him even in his adult life. He managed. The routines helped, and although he was worried when moving in together that they'd notice his struggles, Having them close proved effective in calming his mind. It was a bittersweet cure having them by his side. It alleviated his fears while reminding him painfully that he kept them from them. He could already imagine the surprise in their eyes. He knew they wouldn't laugh at him. Matsumu maybe, if he thought it was a joke. 
Still, none of them would know how to react appropriately. He didn't either. He knew that he shouldn't struggle with something so childish. Slowly, his breathing up down to its usual calm rhythm. His eyes trained on the bluish moonlight getting caught in the blonde strands of hair as he avoided looking into the dark corners surrounding him. He started counting the individual strands to avoid imagining the dark mass closing in on him. It was ironic to think that he out of all people should suffer from this. People called him robotic, which must translate to cold and calculated. It was harsh at times, a harsh reminder that his brain seemed to be working differently, rationalizing emotions rather than facing them, but ultimately it was a praise to his commitment and carefully executed routines, his functionality. He couldn't help but wonder if they'd be disappointed to see his public image crack. So far they seemed delighted when he expressed warmth, love and joy, but would it be the same for pain, sadness, or fear? He sighed. Nothing left to do but accept that it'd be a long night. Hmm, Shinsuka. Sakusa blinked up at him tiredly. Kida hadn't even noticed that he had started to stir awake, but as the cool dark eyes met his, he smiled gently. Hey, good morning. He could see a small frown appearing on the ace's face and quickly straightened his back to get up. I was just about to get out of bed. Do you want anything specific for breakfast? No, I... Shinsuke! He rushed out of bed in an attempt to get away before the observant spiker would notice that something was off, but other than his brain, his legs had indeed fallen asleep, and he noticed a little too late that he could barely feel them. In addition, the rapid motion made the world spin before his eyes, causing him to stumble disoriented to the side until he collided with the nightstand. A rumbling echoed through the room as a couple of things tumbled down and he had to lean almost his entire weight on the small table to stabilize himself and avoid a fall. Behind him, the noises grew in volume. He heard the groan of Atsumu as his source of warmth, namely Saksa, got up and Eren's half-awake but very confused mumbling at the commotion around them. In the meanwhile, Saksa crossed the distance between them and rushed to his side to steady him. Hey, are you alright? Yeah, I just got up too quickly. Don't worry. That is worth where Futa was written on the taller's face, who swiftly guided him back to the bed. Sit down and rest some more. I'll make breakfast. Oh, well. Atsumu offered, barely awake. By what? Setting the kitchen on fire? Thanks, but I'll tell you when I want another batch of burned eggs. Mommy, let it go. That was one time. The raven raised an eyebrow. One time too much. Seriously, Asumi must have absorbed all the cooking talent in the womb. He didn't need to look around to know that Atsumi was pouting. Aaron, on the other hand, chuckled. He's not wrong, Tsumu. Don't look at me like that. I was trying to be romantic. The other laughed and rushed to quickly place a conciliatory kiss on his forehead. Come on, stay with Shinsuke, but I'll help you prepare breakfast, okay? Atsumu sighed but nodded reluctantly. And before Kida knew it, two strong arms snuck themselves around his waist and pulled him back down. He frowned a little. Aaron, I'm capable of making breakfast. His smile turned soft. I know, and you do that a lot for us, but you seem tired. Rest. It's okay. 
He reached down to give him a soft kiss, his lips warm on Kida's own. It felt reassuring. An involuntary sigh of contentment escaped him and Aaron smiled, resting his hand on the side of his face before following Sakasa to the bathroom. He could feel Atsumu nuzzling closer once he left and the sudden weight of a blanket being draped over them both. It was still too early for sunrise and with Aaron closing the door behind him, darkness engulfed them anew. Subconsciously, he pressed himself closer to Atsumu, who in response intertwined a hand with his. Hmm? Are you okay? He still sounded sleepy, but much more alert than before. Hmm, I'm fine. He had to be fine. He will be fine. He wasn't alone. Atsumu sighed. You are always so stubborn. I love you. Get some rest and talk to us if something is wrong. It was rare for Atsumu to chastise him like that, but in an odd way, he appreciated it. With new determination, he formulated a goal for himself. Get the nightmares under control by the end of the month, or talk to them. He was determined to come up with a routine he could practice to defeat this, if possible without burdening them, or even let their impression of him slip like that. Every journey starts with the first step. Thank you so much for watching. A couple things toward the end now. First of all, if you liked it, consider leaving a like because it really helps the channel. And comment your favorite quote under the pinned comment. It would mean so much to me. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more. There will be more parts to this. Now, to the extra thing. I have been struggling with some health related issues lately, which sucks. Which is why the uploads were rarer. But... Be before God, you will have to strike me down before I stop making these videos. Special thanks to my nerd Echoes, and I'm sorry that I have not uploaded the video yet you voted on. The, the poly ships have me in their hooks. I, I don't know what it is. Um, I'm very sorry for everyone who likes the non poly ships. Yeah, have a nice day. Step one, wake up, really gonna rise the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, Everybody just do your thing Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day